Hi, and welcome back to Shane's DIY. Uh, this is episode two of my HTX voltage telemetry series. Uh, in this episode, we're going to cover a few more details and explain the uh, ratio versus offset in the telemetry calibration. Um, in the last video, when we set up the spectrum, we only had to dial in the uh, offset to, to calibrate the voltage. Um, and we're going we're gonna to test the voltage calibration on the bench with a variable power supply to really see how accurate the telemetry is uh, across the full scale. Uh, I recently picked up a couple of a uh, couple of these Radio Master R88 uh, V2 receivers. These things are only eleven dollars, so I had to pick up a couple to try them out. Online opinions of these receivers are very polarized. Some people love them, some people hate them. I don't really want to get into that in this video. Uh, I'm going to reserve my opinion until I do my own testing. And I've got a few ideas lined up to review these receivers, do some range tests and things. So I'm featuring the uh, R88 in this video because uh, I found a secret. Radio Master isn't advertising this, but uh, while I was monitoring the uh, telemetry values coming back from the receiver, um, I noticed a value of A2 that was in my telemetry list. And it had a, it had a V after it, like it was a voltage. And uh, and I saw this when I was connected with both D8 and D16 protocols. And um, I found this, the SBUS connector on the side of the thing has a, four pins on it. Only three of them are being used for the... Uh, uh, S bus. There's a fourth pin. So I wanted to research and see if I could figure out what that pin was doing. Um, I measured it with an ohmmeter to ground to make sure it wasn't a dead short to ground. Check that out um, just to see if I could find anything else that it would do. Once I was pretty confident it wasn't going to short the thing out, I uh, injected a low voltage into that pin. And sure enough, I got a value on that uh, telemetry uh, input on A2. The bummer is they don't give you a connector for that. So here's the connector that they give you. You can see that. There's the uh, the fourth position doesn't have a wire in it at all. So you can't get a signal out of that easily. So I actually just cracked the thing open and uh, injected a voltage just to the inside pin carefully. But you know, if you go through the uh, the ad, it doesn't say anything about voltage uh, pack voltage information. There's nothing in here for that. And then when they talk about it in the manual. Let's pop up the manual here. You can go through the whole manual, even right here, where it, when you see the side of it, uh, all you see is all you get is the uh, the X. There's no indicator for what that pin is. But I've been all through the manual. There's nothing in there, nothing in there related to that. So, uh, but I did verify that it works. But uh, once I got that voltage in there, um, it was not scaled correctly. So later on in the video, we're gonna I'll show you how I corrected that scaling. Uh, we're going to go through all that. We're going to test it very thoroughly on the bench with the variable power supply. Uh, but first, let me show you how I uh, modified this RD88 to give me a voltage sense wire. All right, to get flight pack voltage out of here, we are going to solder a wire to this far left pin. Uh, you could just get a new connector for this. I didn't want to buy a whole pack just to get that one extra pin. I could have moved the other pin, but then I'd have to mess up the uh, S-Bus connector, and I didn't want to do that. So I figured it's easier just to solder a wire to that pin. If you're not comfortable doing that, you could probably try to find another connector for this. Or use the one that they include with it, but they leave that wire out. Just move one over and then cut that off the other end. Uh, but uh, let's get that wire soldered to that. Yeah, it's got a little flux on it. All right, so let me carefully bend this around and put a little hole in the case. Just gonna make a little hole, probably with my soldering iron, just to make it easy. Right about here, probably in the top case too, just so that it'll uh, fit through there. And uh, put it, uh, a little secure it with a little hot glue just so it doesn't move around.
hole's a little bigger than it needed to be, but uh, it'll be all right. I'm gonna put a little hot glue in there, get it secured. Looks secure. Let's put it back up. We'll go test it. All right, my workbench here is a disaster, so you have to forgive me for that. But uh, so I've got the R88 connected. I've got my new sense wire hooked up to uh, my variable bench power supply positive. And uh, of course, with negative, I just made this uh, jumper lead to replace the battery to go to my ESC. And I've got a variable bench power supply. All right, I got my radio master bound to the receiver. I've got my variable bench power supply set up. Right now, it's at 12 and a half volts. And as you can see, the voltage telemetry is, you know, 12.5, 12.6 volts. All right, so I want to give you some examples here of how to calibrate the sensor. Let me go into the model. Let's go over to the telemetry screen. I'm gonna go down to A2, which is our flight pack voltage. I've already been doing some tweaking. Now let me show you. So 132 is where this come out right out of the box. When I first bound it and I discovered the telemetry, the ratio is set at 132. That only gives me a voltage of 8.6 when I'm feeding it 12 and a half. So there's a couple of ways to adjust that. Uh, in my previous voltage telemetry video, all I did is tweak the uh, offset a little bit. And I have checked that one. That was on the spectrum. And uh, I gave it a, a voltage range all the way from about 7 or 8 volts on the low end all the way up to 14 or 15 volts. And it, and it followed it um, properly. So if your ratio is close, and that one has a ratio of zero, I believe. The ratio of zero, that one was much closer right out of the box. This one with a ratio of 132 uh, is quite a bit off at 8.6. Now, the way I did it the first time is I adjusted the offset. If I do that in this time and I adjust this until I see 12 and a half volts, okay, so an offset of four volts. Now it's reading right, and that's fine, but Let's back out to the main screen now. 12.49 volts, so I'm reading 12.6. Pretty close. I could tweak that offset a little. All right, so let's, uh, let me tweak that again, just to get it closer. All right. Now we got our 12 and a half volts. Okay, so with the, if you did it this way, watch what happens if you, adjust the voltage. So I'm at 12 and a half. I'm gonna go down to 12. So now I'm at 12.2 on the on the trend on the receiver. As I keep going down there's 11 volts. See I'm at 11 and a half. It's not proportional correctly so let me go down to 10. Still at 10.8. 9 volts. Still at 10 on the on the receiver. Now I'm down to 8, and it's 9.4. So see, if you adjust it like that, in this case, it is not going to work properly. Now I'm at 7 volts actual, and the receiver's telemetry is sending 8.7. So you see that's not ideal for this. Now I'm down to 6 volts. I still show 8. So you wouldn't want to do it that way because your voltage is going to be incorrect. And just if you're curious... I was able to get this voltage down before I lost power to the receiver quite low. The receiver itself says 4.5 volts to uh, 8.4 volts. You can see right now the receiver is seeing 4.6 volts when I'm feeding it 5 volts. So let me keep going down. I think it was right around 4.2 or something. Let me see. So there's 4.3. So I get, I'm supplying the ESC with only 4.1 volts or 4.09 volts 
the voltage to the receiver got down to 3.7 and that's when I lost connection. So your battery voltage could get all the way down to 4 volts before you actually lose that. So let me go back up. As soon as I get to 4.2 volts, it turns back on. So a little off subject, but just if you're curious how low voltage you can go. Now, the RSSI did plummet pretty significantly. It's, it doesn't like being that low. Just moving my arm around is freaking it out. All right, so let's go back up. Now back up to 12 volts, and you can see I'm pretty close now. So it, it, when you adjust the offset like that, it only adjusts it right where you set it. So now let's go back in. All right, go over to telemetry. Go back down to my A2. Edit. Let's put that offset back down to zero. You know, this time I'm going to just adjust my ratio. I'm at 12 and a half volts. I'm going to adjust my ratio up until I see 12 and a half volts up here. I've already done this, so I know it's 192. So let me do that. Leave the offset at zero. Now let's check that. See how linear the uh, voltage is. So let me escape out of here. So now my voltage is equivalent. I got 12.5, 12.6. Over here I'm at 12.5. Now let's take some jumps down. Okay, so now there's 11 and a half. We're still matching. 10 and a half. Still matching. 9 and a half. 8 and a half. So you can see by doing the adjustment with the ratio rather than the offset in this particular application, your voltage stays right on through the whole range. Now I'm down to 6.5 volts. It's reading right on. I can also go up. There's 14.5, 15.5. So, you know, and we could tweak it a little bit. You know, if it's off by that tenth, that's not really significant. You could you could probably use the offset in this case just to bump it, bump it down by 0.1 volts if you needed to. But as far as I'm concerned, this is close enough. But I just wanted you to get a representation of why you would use ratio versus offset. Um, and I don't know if it's brand specific, but uh, the spectrum was apparently the, the data coming over was scaled really fairly accurately. I only had to offset it by just a little bit. Um, but with this one, this Radio Master, the ratio was, was preset in there. Maybe that reads fine with uh, an FR Sky radio. I don't know. But uh, anyway, with this uh, setup, that's how you would do it. And you can see with this, you've got battery pack voltage. This is pretty awesome. Now, I've not given, if you try this modification yourself, you do it at your own risk. I don't know why they don't advertise this. Maybe there's some sort of bug with it. I don't know. I might end up frying my receiver. I don't know. But it is capable, and you can see I was able to read that voltage really accurately across a broad range of voltages. Pretty neat for an $11 receiver. Now, I'm going to do uh, more testing on this. I've got some pretty good ideas to do some, some really scientific range tests uh, that I haven't seen before done. Um, got some videos coming up soon on that. So keep an eye out for new videos coming up for the uh, Radio Master R88. I got a couple of these that uh, I received. They're V2s. They also they do bind to D8, D16, and the uh, Futaba SFHSS protocol. And uh, I'll do some examples of how to bind to that if anybody needs that. But that's coming up. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, anyway, some cool voltage uh, telemetry stuff. Thanks for watching.